Oh my gosh, guys, we made it through all 30 designs. I'm so excited. We're going to flip through these now. Just give me half a second to switch to the other camera. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and we are going to flip through all 30 of the pen and ink drawings that we did for the 30 days of cozy, creative. It was my January, but it kind of fell into February too. So thank you for joining me here. I really appreciate it. If you like what you see, make sure and click that like button and share the video with your friends. If you're interested in any of these designs, you can get them three different ways. One, you can draw them yourself. Click on the 30 Cozy Creative Designs uh, Marathon, and you can go through all the time-stamped video and pick out the ones that you want to draw. I do them step-by-step. Step. You can draw along with me. Second way, you can buy on Teespring the 30 Cozy, cozy Creative Hand-Drawn Designs that you can download instantly and print off on any paper that you want. I did a, another project where I had printed my hearts from my All My Love, but it's the same thing. Um, print it on watercolor paper and you're ready to go. Or print it on mixed media paper, whatever you want to do. But you have all 30 designs instantly and you don't have to draw them yourself. If you don't have a printer and you want to, so number three, if you don't have a printer and you want to have all of the designs, you can buy the book on Amazon. And it is all of the designs except one. I missed the cake. So there is a special instant download from my website where you just do a right click and save as. And you have the celebration cake. So then you'll have all the designs. I have an updated version that's going into Amazon review right now. That will have the cake in it also. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you. I know that this is really going to be geared towards my diehard fans. The ones that really want to see all of the artwork in one place. So that's what we're doing. And that's what we're doing. That's, you know, we're here. We're going to chat. This is a day. It's coming up on a snow day pretty soon. We are going to be having some weather. They're saying that our temperature is only going to go down today from where we are. <laughs> so thank you guys. All right. We're going to start at day number one here. Let's do it real quick here. We're going to flip through the book of just the pen and ink. Or maybe I'll do it this way, side by side. Nah, nah. We're going to flip through the book real quick. So we had all of the designs as pen and ink. So we're just going to flip through really quick so that you can see all of the designs. Yeah, and they were all drawn live. That's the thing. I did not uh, plan these out ahead of time. We were looking for references, making decisions on the on the fly. So these are all of the pen and ink pieces. There we go. Don't hate me, but you have temperatures that's 85 degrees. Oh my goodness, Tatiana, that is way too warm. <laughs> I'd rather have cold weather. You can always put on more sweaters. You get to a certain point where you can't take off any more clothes. Uh, so here, I'm just flipping through all of the pieces of artwork in the book. Look at that. Jack the Jade. I really like that one. The bunny slippers. That's what we used on the cover. The girl with the snow. There we are. I love this one. This particular uh, piece of artwork, it looks very plain in the coloring book. and Or references. That is on purpose, so that way you have room to go and put your own stamp on it. I just saw a friend of mine just drew this one up herself, and I'm very, very impressed by it, Miss Katie. So thank you. Here's, see, we're just flipping through. This is the number one video the um, of the whole series. The uh, 
French press really got the most views. I'm not sure why, but it got the most views. This one here. So I'm just flipping through all of the pen and ink so that you have kind of an idea where we started. And then we're going to go through all of the color. Now, this one, the sunflowers, is actually one of my most favorite ones. You'll see in a minute why. But the cat also was really a favorite one. So there we go. <laughs> Although the, 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 yeah, see, there's all of these ones that you can have a, you can have more than one favorite. And then the very last one where I was really afraid of the bubbles and I shouldn't have been afraid of them. <laughs> but that is the flip through of the book. Now we're going to flip through the art. So what do you do? You know, I'm, people are asking, what do you do with all your artwork? Well, I'm making things with my artwork. So this one right here, I actually went and made a reading log book. See, they don't do too badly on, on matching my colors either. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. So that reading log book is available on Amazon also. So painting in and You'll notice as we go through here, there is, um, there's sort of a progression in my skills. There's also, I will say that as I went along, I got more comfortable doing this live and not worrying so much about making it fast. So the first ones, I was trying to keep them really quick. When I got down to the last ones, I was going for two hours sometimes and it was okay you can tell the difference. There's a depth of color and a strength in the actual ending finish of the paintings, but these are really pretty. So chocolate mint, the daisies and the cup of tea. This one was a really fun one. So yeah. So here we go. I, I really like that one also. This is one that can go many different ways. And I'm thinking a whole bunch of different ones. This would be a beautiful, just a journal, just a blank book journal, maybe a dot page. You know, if you have any suggestions for things that you would like to see me do with some of these pieces of art, let me know. I really, <laughs> that one was a lot of fun. That uh, surreal landscape with a peanut butter fudge milkshake. I mean, gee. This one is very soft and serene, very, very calming. I really like this one with the succulents and the tea. I found that I really like the color, kind of that turquoise teal type color. As I was going through, greens became my friend. I started liking the, liking the greens too. I'm going too fast? Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, well, I'm only on number six. <laughs> I just, I want people to be able to, um, to see them all. The galaxy chocolatey yumminess. Okay, I'll go back to galaxy chocolatey yumminess. This one was a lot of fun because going in and splattering. Splattering can be stars. Splattering can be snow. Splattering can be flowers or texture in trees and grass. You, there's a lot of things that we can do. And I am really looking forward to just playing in the studio this month. So, all right. So now we're at the greens. Is that better? <laughs> there we go. All right. So there we go. I'm looking. What about a cozy, comforting calendar for our pocketbooks? Oh, so you mean doing something that's about this size, maybe? Um, I really can't do anything smaller than six by, I think, five and a half by... I might be able to do a five by seven book. I'm not sure. I like the size of the five and a half by eight and a half, which is this size. Okay. I have small hands. And so this is my little hand on this book. So it's small enough to fit into your backpack or um, a large purse, you know, but yeah, this is the inside of that. And I drew this up too. So this was all hand laid out. I really like this. These kinds of books are fun um, because you can, I mean, it's kind of like potato chips once you start making them. 
We could do a full calendar. Yes, we could do a full calendar of pictures. But the problem is, is that I would, I, I have a thing, a problem with doing the full calendars is that I can't put color pictures inside and have it be a book that is a reasonable price. The... If I wanted to do full color pictures inside, you know, do a, a glossy color book or printed book, it would end up being like $30 for, for a book. And I don't know that I've got anybody or a calendar. And I don't know if I really have anybody that wants to buy a calendar of my art for 30 bucks, you know? So just, just saying this one, first time we did the bokeh, uh, in this set, in this series, this was really fun. It gives it that super sparkly, sparkly look to those Zen stacked rocks. And this was one that we went afterwards and put some of the actual pen lines back in. It was gouache and watercolor. Yeah, um, a pocketbook size with maybe the pen and ink artwork on the inside and a full color art on the outside, I think is where I'm looking at. Then we've got this one. First time we did the wood. First time I'd done wood. Okay. Just figuring it out. I love how this one turned out. It is so much fun. And some surprising colors every once in a while. The glow of the candle actually feels glowy. This would make a lovely um, recipe book, I think. Or, um, you know, collect your family recipes type of book fun time. <laughs> pop tarts. This one is probably the most pop art or, um, or really gouache styled artwork that I did during the series. This was done all with gouache and these pop tarts, strawberry pop tarts, the frosting really looks frosting-y, frosting-y. <laughs> oh, Magic eraser technique on another card and created and it looks magical. Ah, a color your own calendar. Absolutely. Yeah. Using the magic eraser to, um, to lift out colors was just, uh, one of those things that we figure out tips, tricks, hacks as we go along. So using the magic eraser when we were, you know, pulling out the, the bokeh and then putting in bokeh, cutting, being able to cut it. That, that really made me happy. The glossiness on this frosting really makes me happy too. And these strawberries actually look like real strawberries. I'm trying to tip it just enough so that we can catch the shadow. It seems like flat on we're losing some of the contrast. So I'm trying to tip this around so you can see it. All right. The quilt. The quilt. Now, painting the quilt was so much fun. I loved painting this quilt. And you can see as I'm tipping it here, there's some shimmer and shine. So this was painted with gouache and then colored with metallic pens and some shimmer, uh, shimmery metallic paints. So we have all kinds of things. You might need a Pop-Tart. <laughs> So I really, I enjoyed that. And the fact, I got the little hummingbird in here and some flowers, butterfly. That really looks like one of those, um, like somebody cut a piece of someone's overalls and got one of the um, tab buttons, those little bachelor buttons that are two parts and you pop a hole through the fabric and you go smack it with a hammer. <laughs> they call them bachelor buttons because you didn't have to sew them, you used a you used a hammer to put them on. So that was a lot of fun. And this one was left open on purpose so people can um, personalize. There's the word. Personalize it for themselves. All right. Hey, guys. Hey, if you're enjoying this, make sure that you click that like button so that YouTube knows that it's something that they should share with people because this is, like, so much fun. <laughs> Here we go. This just makes me think of a diary or a journal. 
this lovely little basket, maybe, uh, maybe even just a book of shopping lists or wish lists, doing a book of wish lists. That would be fun. These roses are definitely my style of rose. They're not a super, super detailed. Having the um, pen lines to uh, give me the framework. And on this particular painting, I like that it went outside in the margin. <laughs> the handle turned out really well. Oh, you remember those buttons? Yeah, I used to do those all the time. So this is another fun one here. And remember that all of these are available um, for you to learn how to draw through on the uh, Christmas Eve marathon videos. So the, there's two videos with all of the pieces of artwork hand-drawn live so that you can learn how to draw them. And they're all time-stamped. So um, time-stamping is a really good thing. If I let if I'm like really, really organized and have a whole lot of time on my hands, I can actually go through and timestamp this one with the link to those others. But that's, I think that's getting a little excessive. I'll just make sure that this, you know, these are the big pink roses. <laughs> uh, the puppy in the window that started as a cat in the window. <laughs> there could be a cat in the window still, but I say it's a, I say it's a Westie dog but you can say this is a kitty cat still. And this one, I like the very graphical um, architectural styling and it's sort of comic bookish, sort of cartoony, but it's not. And we have some good shadowing going on and we learned some techniques and tricks with this one. I really liked how the window turned out, the reflections from like the trees out in the environment coming across and maybe some of that deeper shadow that's inside the room. Can you get some hugs? Oh, Miss Amy, you certainly, you have been body slammed with more hugs than you can possibly, possibly imagine. Oh, you enjoyed the tracing app from yesterday. Yeah, the Da Vinci Eye. That would make making these types of things really easy. If you've got the, if you've got pictures on your phone that you want to transfer onto watercolor card to paint them. Grab your photos on your phone and use that DaVinci Eye app. So check out that video after this one. It's a lot of fun. I actually go through and show the two different ways of, that I've used the DaVinci Eye app so far. And um, that's the classic mode and the AR mode showing how on the AR mode you can actually move your paper. <laughs> And on the um, classic mode, you know, the zooming in and how it stays locked to the edge of your sh edge of your paper. This one, chocolate waffles, chocolate waffles. It was really interesting because the day that I, I did this one and then posted it, I saw somebody else from around the world, someplace else, t tweet about some waffles that they had just drawn in their sketchbook. It was really a lot of fun. So yeah, you know, I'll let you know, I had the DaVinci Eye app on my phone since August and I hadn't even tried it until a week before doing the video yesterday. So, you know, sometimes we download things because it sounds really interesting and fun and then we find that we're not in the right place for it yet. That's what happened to me. And yesterday. Oh, wow. I was in the right place. I mean, drawing on a piece of wood, drawing with pen on a piece of wood, tracing a piece of uh, photograph on a piece of, oh my gosh, cool things that you can do. The garden shed window with the fun shelf across with the, or bar type of thing across with the bottles hanging. That one just really makes me happy. I wish I would have done it in portrait. I'm finding that a lot of my pieces, I wish I would have figured out a way to do them in portrait mode because portrait is so much easier to put on a book cover. <laughs> ah, yes. The painting that Stephanie still curses my name for. <laughs> oh, what? The, the elephant? The elephant that took us like a long time to figure out? <laughs> 
It just took me a while to get warmed up to the idea. Uh, this is Jack the Jade. And here we did that bokeh effect again. Lots of colors in the background. We watercolored the background. Then we went in with gouache and paint and bokeh it in. This one's a lot of fun. Here's the one that is like the one that I did on the cover. So the one I... So this is what I actually painted to make the cover. And this was done on a printout of the actual artwork from the, from the downloadable book. So I downloaded from the book. And if you download the book and you print all of the pages just on plain paper, um, you can use your Da Vinci Eye, take a picture of it individually, or just pull, you know, pull the pictures in. They are PDF file on the downloadable book, so you'll have to do some rigmarole to get it into your Da Vinci Eye. So that's why I was saying if you print it out, then you can take a picture of it onto your phone, and then you'd have it to draw bigger on a piece of paper. The painting with the hanging jars. Oh, that one worked out really well. I, I was really happy with that. So I'm, I'm looking over here. So my, this is the, the, I guess I'm backwards. Yeah, I'm backwards. It just makes it just what it is. I'm backwards there. <laughs> Oh, because you asked what peeling paint looked like. Yeah, you know what? The peeling paint, um, it kind of worked. It kind of worked. Going back in and getting that little shadow line along the edge so it looks like the paint kind of got stuck into the wood. It doesn't look as much of peeling paint as stained paint with, uh, or stained wood with other paint and then sanding back. And it's, it looks weathered. It looks weathered. And it worked. So no, I did not curse your name for that one. The only one that I have that I have a direct Amy feeling on is coming up. <laughs> so here's those bunny slippers and this is working out having that glow in the background and this is where I'm starting to spend a little more time. Uh, the videos I think we're starting to get a little bit longer as we're going through here. If you uh, use that link to purchase, download Stephanie's books, um, if you don't want to purchase them from Amazon. Oh yeah, if you don't want to purchase from Amazon, you can download the book from Teespring. There you go. All the links are listed down below in the more information box. But these bunny slippers and tea, I think that I'm getting ready for some bunny slippers. Actually, I just knitted a pair of um, just sort of sock slippers that I have to finish sewing the ends in. But this one, Dreaming of Snow, isn't that fun? And this one, uh, Jan, my mo my moderator today, Jan from Serendipity Art, Serendipity Soul Fluid Art, is Jan, and she has a granddaughter named Taylor, that I think is a beautiful young lady, and I totally agree that this looks like Taylor, um, from the back, it just make it has that feeling, of her, and she's such a beautiful beautiful girl, with a beautiful soul and. Uh, optimism that you can just see whenever she smiles. I, I just love it. But this painting here with our splatted water technique to get those big wet snowflakes and then gouache that was splattered on at the end to get the little snowflakes. I think that one uh, just really, really made my heart feel happy. Now, this was actually the last one that we painted, but I put it in the right order in the book uh, with the with the book. But this, I love this tart. I think that it turned out to look so real. And I, you know, the wood just turned out, the slats, the shadows, the shadows underneath of the plate. It looks very solid and like a real piece of ceramic that you kind of slip your finger in and pick it up. So there we go. I'm, I'm just sort of looking across at the, at the, uh, chat also. This one, the art supplies. 
I love this one. This really came together nicely. It was a quick painting. This one was quick, but it came together so well. And again, this is another one that I've gone and done something with. So I, I used it. Look at that. Let's zoom out. Zoom out. So I used this art and I did squish it a little bit because I wanted more width than this had. So I kind of squished it to get more of the window in. And this is an art journal, uh, art log. So it is for keeping track of all your art stuff. It's an inventory log book and it, it's big. This is eight and a half by 11. So it's a standard size piece of paper. And I love this because you've got, you know, you've got your cover page and stuff like that, but the table of contents in it, you can say, um, my golden stuff starts on page one. Maybe I've got a lot of golden, so I might have, you know, two or three pages of golden and then it might go to Liquitex. Then it might go to Derwent and the polychromos colored pencils or ink tense pencils. But I do a different brand for each page and I'll show you right here, different brand for each page. And at the bottom of each page, it does have a page number. So you know, oh, I started polychromos, the, I started these colored pencils or whatever on a page. And there's enough pages in the table of contents to match up for all the pages of, I think there's 90, 90 pages of supplies so you could you can keep track of all your supplies and then at the back there's like 20 pages of or 30 20 or 30 pages in the back that are project ideas pages so that you can make your wish list for your different supplies you can keep track of ideas for new paintings just like a little journal at the back so it gives you a little bit of everything sorry turned into a, a little sales pitch there but I want to show you that you can do things with your artwork if you're willing to um, explore opportunities. So we're going to zoom back in now. Yeah, you could use that log to um, as an inventory log for a business also. So you're going to log in all the paintings that you do and keep track of them to give to people. Ooh, that is is a really great way to do. Yeah, those are all available on, that's available on my Amazon store. So if you click my Amazon store link down below, I have a, uh, my books tab. <laughs> it's like, I've got 10 books that I've done now between um, dot journals and I just have a, um, I have a new Easter activity book. I'll show that at the end. But this, because it didn't use any of the art from this. So I'll show it at the end. If it, people aren't interested, they don't have to stick around. This peaceful cup of tea. What I loved about this one, we, we've got the actual, like, sh we've got the good shadow going. I, I love that shadow here of the spoon and how it wobbles with the shape of the fabric. So it's not... Um, it doesn't look like this, that it's sitting on something that's hard and flat, like a piece of paper. It looks like it's sitting on fabric. And then the, it feels like you could pick up and touch the texture on that cup. So that one really makes me happy. Again, this was like the number one viewed paint, uh, viewed painting so far on the series. And that is the front, the glass French press with the, um, with this mug that kind of old fashioned 60s retro teal turquoise ceramic with the tiny little handle that how would anybody use that cup? It would be a hold it around the cup type of cup, I think. But we got the glass in, we've got the shine and it's very, um, you know, it's a very gender neutral. The wood, again, I really like wood. I found out I really like wood. <laughs> Never apologize for shameless plugs. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, sometimes I, I feel, I think that we feel um, like we push ourselves out there a lot. But I guess as a business owner, I need to push myself out there and push my products out there in front of people. 
This one, I am in love with. I totally love this soft pink and gray type of painted feeling to it that um, almost like it's a photography set. This one just really, really struck me as one of my best pieces for getting shape and form 3D quality without going overboard trying to make it look like it's something totally real in real space. A couple of the tricks here, making sure that the shadow underneath of the edge is right up against it and it, that the shadow doesn't um, pull out too far from it. Since the lighting is so strong, I think that's part of what makes it feel like it's in place in a real spot. People love their coffee. People love pictures of coffee and tea. Absolutely, Phyllis, they do. Did she say dude painting? Um, no. No, I don't think I said dude painting. <laughs> Maybe good painting. My nose is a little snuffy. <laughs> All right. This is the painting that I, I have... Uh, strong Miss Amy feels about because she was all the way through as soon as I said I was doing teapots she was like an elephant teapot an elephant teapot where's the elephant teapot all the way through the evening and into the wee hours of the morning <laughs> and that's okay because you know what I really love this elephant teapot <laughs> but it it took a little bit of um, I had to wrap myself around getting it done uh, sometimes people will make a suggestion and you're like, I could probably do that. Do I want to do that? Maybe I want to do it. I'm not sure I want to do that. And then a little bit later, you're like, oh, yeah, I think I want to do that. And so I just, I was non-committal about doing it and then just decided it was going to be. And I love how the flowers look on here. When when we painted these in, and this was an afterthought, we drew the flowers in, we doodled them on after that show, after the marathon, this, the, the doodling was done during the actual painting episode. So if you're looking for some flower doodles and, you know, this, this can have quite the, uh, Mrs. Potts type of feel to it from, uh, you know, the Beauty and the Beast type of feel to it. It's a very whimsical and um, fairy tale. I really, I do like that. No, you didn't really have to ask too many times. I just, you know, my brain was like, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? And make it look like one that's mine. So I looked at a teapot. I had a teapot that was sort of this shape and an image from Unsplash and I was looking at that and it's little teacup there were a whole bunch more cups and stuff and I was like one cup one cup <laughs> and yeah the little elephant teapot just it came together especially I love it more with the flowers being doodled onto it also and that soft pink in the ear <laughs> made me really happy here we go Journaling for all of you who like your journal, making your morning pages or have that memory of going to the coffee shop and sitting in front of the pretty windows and lots of light coming through and journaling or writing your uh, outline for your novel or figuring out what your grocery list is going to be. I love how the glasses turned out. These glasses just really made me happy that vibrant color of the post-it notes. Yeah, totally, totally a fun, fun painting. Yeah, the ear looks really 3D on that elephant. Yeah, see, you guys are like a little, just, just a, about 30 seconds or so behind me. So I look over at your comments and your comments are from something about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> it is what it is. I know. There we go. But this one turned out really well. And again, I wish I had it in a portrait way to put onto, but it was too big. It needed to be a landscape. So it might end up being 
I don't know. I have to figure out a way to use this though. I could trim it so that it's a book cover that's like that. Ooh, I could get two book covers out of this one. Mmm, I like that. This is one of my most favorite ones. The, I loved this particular painting, the sunflower. And when you looked at the, um, the original, they had like book pages that were sitting there and I wanted letters. I wanted envelopes. I love how the, the shading on the white paper of the envelopes got that sort of gray and white. That was totally made up out of my, my imagination. So, uh, but the picture itself, the composition was taken from a photograph that, again, that I got from Unsplash. And um, I keep saying that because what I'm going to do tomorrow is going to be how to make your own collections on Unsplash so that you can start gathering inspiration photos and photos to use for reference. And you can use those photos with the DaVinci Eye app. So one of the things I want to do is start putting together more photos of little cottages and houses because it's way easier to do a quick trace to get my basic form and shape of little houses and buildings and things like that using the DaVinci Eye and then refining it by hand afterwards. But this sunflower painting is probably one of my most favorite. I love the contrast. Pushing the contrast really, really makes it feel 3D. It feels like these petals are lifted up. It feels like the letters are really underneath of that cup. So if there's one thing that I learned the most during this whole process, because this was a learning process for me also, is that I needed to pump up the contrast, let it dry, put more contrast in, let it dry, put more contrast in. And then it really built up that richness of color. So it made it feel more finished. I think that's what it is. The kitty. <laughs> I should paint some uh, photos from my travels. Oh yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, maybe I should start painting on square paper. Um, well, the thing is, is that with square paper, it makes it really hard to do the shape of books that I want to do, which are the five and a half by eight and a half or the eight and a half by 11. Uh, those are the size books that I really want to do. So it's better to work on a rectangular piece of paper and just start developing my, uh, my compositions to incorporate that that shaping. I might even sit down and play with taking photos of my, of, you know, like putting some cups and saucers and putting a journal and seeing how I could get all of it into a composition in the, um, portrait, portrait way. Let's see. You miss this one, the kitty cat. Yeah, the cat, the cat is so much fun. I, I like that I went back and really pushed in more contrast in the background here. Now his little whiskers and some of the highlights here were put on with colored pencil afterwards. So you don't have to stick with just watercolor, just gouache, just paint, mix them all together, have a multimedia piece, enjoy the process have fun with it. Now I saw some, I saw some amazing pictures from community members that did this. I want to call out Shauna. I loved your calico cat. That, that just really, really was so special. This is stone or, or crystal that's been cut. So it has that kind of shape to it. The weeds that were stuck in there. And yes, that is, missing the ear back there. It's just because of the way the cat was, the picture of the cat was taken. He only had one ear in the picture. I think there might have been a tiny little corner of the ear sticking out down low, but I like how Kathy um, Bartosik 
she went went ahead and figured out the way to get the other ear put in so it looked balanced and i like that too so this cat he's watching something probably somebody has a feather on a on a stick and the cat is looking up at the feather on a stick i make up stories about my artwork here we go this one was a blast I love doing this texture. If you saw my 31 um, cute and creative holiday ornaments, there was a gold ball that was, all of it was this pattern, that indented, um, very three-dimensional. <laughs> so there, this one is this one really, really made me happy. Sorry, I do. I it, It's like I need to have my monitor on that side. But, you know, it is what it is. This one is, it could be a rose. It could be a peony. It could be a tulip. It could be any kind of flower you want it to be. I just happen to do, it's kind of a peony flower looking away. But these leaves are not peony leaves. And it's just sitting on a shelf. But lovely, lovely texture. Yeah. I'm ready for another cinnamon roll. <laughs> this cinnamon roll was so much fun also. And I like my sort of random dust motes floating through the air. I ac accidentally dropped one drop of water on. And instead of getting all flustered and worried about it, I just flicked a couple more spots of water on it and then dried it really quick. So it kind of looks like those little magic fairy dust that goes floating around through sunbeams. But this cinnamon roll has that warm and gooey look to it. The little bit of shine, because the light's coming from this direction here. That shine on the um, icing, the shine on the gooiness. I love that mug too, the cup. And that could be a cup of whatever you want to be drinking. And then we did the sort of grayed, weathered wood look. Yes, yes, the one with the vase inspired you to paint the poppies. That, as part of your 100 project. Oh my gosh, those poppies are amazing. So here's the celebration cake. More wood. <laughs> and we said that this was like a malachite table. Malachite tabletop right down here. So it's kind of a stone tabletop with a wood base, gingerbread cookies, and a peanut butter frosting. <laughs> we were saying this is probably a spice cake with a peanut butter icing, peanut butter frosting. And I think that was really nice. And this was sort of a celebration out on the patio. I love the sky. These clouds in this sky didn't take hardly any time to do and it was so effective I love that you can do that with watercolor now you need waffles pop tart cinnamon bun a huge pot of tea and some time to make art uh-huh uh-huh and then the last one in the book which was the one I dreaded the most <laughs> because of the bubbles and I shouldn't have been dreading it I should not have been dreading those bubbles they were so much fun but this is like on the edge of the bathtub you've got your mug with your cup of coffee your cookie a pretty candle glowing putting off a little a lovely light and then these bubbles and we've got translucency we've got transparency we've got reflection of all the colors that are in the in the actual in the actual um, scene the yellows the greens the pinks so here we go whoo that was a walkthrough of all 30 paintings that we did now the difference between painting one and painting they're, they're just different, aren't they? They're just different paintings. So this was painting one. This was painting 30. They were both cups. They both had pink in them and yellow. Wow. There's, 
There's a lot of similarities between the number one and number 30, but there's a solidness to the things that are in this one. There's a, a weight to them. This cup here feels a little lighter. I don't know. I don't know. It there's it's interesting to see how your art progresses when you do 30 of something. So doing 30 paintings in a row, that was a lot of fun. Now, I did do in the middle of this process, I did do a little project with the um doodle hearts and did a little mini marathon on a Saturday doing doodle hearts. So I'm going to flip through this too, because this was all part of that 30 day, per 30 day series. So this one works out really well as for anything. It works for Valentine's. It works for Mother's Day. It works for a re reminder of love to your friends. And it is a little six image color book that you can get from Teespring download. And it's just two pieces of paper. Look at that. So you can print this out on your own printer on just text weight paper and use it as a coloring book that you can stick into an envelope and send off as the actual whole card. And as someone said yesterday, you could even send a, a little bit of some watercolors with it. I would suggest if you were going to do it with the watercolors, that you print on watercolor paper each of the now this was still printed out as two pieces it's just two pieces of paper but it was printed on 140 pound watercolor paper on the draft mode so it doesn't have quite as much ink so it doesn't bleed and then you have these you take another piece of watercolor paper and put dots of some watercolor and let it dry. And you can stick that in a little plastic envelope and put it in with your cards, put it inside, and you can mail that off to a friend. You might need to add an extra, you know, an extra half ounce stamp or something like that with it, but, or an extra ounce stamp just to be safe, but it's still small enough and it's not even, it's not a quarter and a quarter of an inch thick. So you can still send it through the mail as just an, um, uh, just in an envelope. And then if you don't want to paint and you don't want to draw and you don't want to color, but you want to be able to send some hearts to friends, little postcards, you can get the downloadable postcards that are already painted. It still prints out as two sheets of paper. So you've got the four there. Let's zoom out a little. And down. Come on. There we go. So one, one sheet of paper and the second sheet of paper. You just cut this one in half. So now you've got a cover for your little set of, of cards if you wanted to send them all to one person. Or you've got postcards that you can go and I'm, I'm like doing this on the fly, draw your, draw your line down and then you can address it to put the stamp on it and then write your little note on the other side. This is a legal size postcard. And if you print it on cardstock paper, it will go through the mail. You can just stick a stamp on it and it will go through. So that is another way, especially if you want to have Valentine's to send out really quick or that you want to drop off. This works really well. All right. I think that, oh, I was going to show you the, um, the Easter activity book. Just because the Easter activity book is brand new. I just got my copies yesterday. So I, I ordered three copies because I'm going to give one to each of my grandsons and I'm going to keep one. But the Easter activity book, this is eight and a half by 11. 
So it's eight and a half by 11. And I say fun for all ages on this book because it is. It is made so that there are things that the grown-ups will like coloring or your tweens will like coloring or your really, really littles will like coloring. It's a combination. There's 50 pieces of artwork in here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but the backside of each page is the dot grid. So uh, activities, there's dot to dots and uh, things like that in here also. So dot to dots and little puzzles. This, there's some simple mandalas to color. At the, oh, at the very, very back, this is one, this is one that I think, you know, a little bit older would like to color. Maybe this one, a little bit older, would like to color. The mandalas. Anybody can color. Anybody can color. There are posters, and I did leave enough at the margin here. So you can take and cut this out, and you'll have a poster that you can hang up. Happy Easter. Because I know that a lot of kids like to be able to hang their artwork and projects up. Please cut the pages out and use them. Help the Easter Bunny match the eggs. So, you know, you've got your, your egg matching half and half. Fun stuff. Big eggs with easy to color in areas. It's just cute. More eggs. Lots of eggs. The, the puppy with all of the eggs. This one's a little bit trickier. This is maybe a little bit older. But then you've got your bunny. And everything in here was hand-drawn by me. So I did look at some references and uh, get some ideas for things, but everything's hand-drawn. So this little guy, this one right here, he is a, oh, dot to dot. I made all the dot to dots by hand. So look at that. I drew all the mazes by hand. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for being here, for checking this out. Another maze. The little elephant as a dot to dot. Meet me at the hop. <laughs> so these are all fun things that you can... There's the dot to dot of that little guy. Fun things to color, to draw, easy, and a little bit harder. There we go. So you guys got a, a quick flip through of my Easter activity coloring book. It's available on Amazon, as all of my books are. If you are uh, interested in wanting me to do a downloadable book that you could do as a the half size, you know, print it out and do it as a smaller book, half size book, with all of your pages being folded together, let me know. I can make that into a downloadable book also. Thank you. Remember, what is what is the 100 day challenge? Oh, I saw that there were some people that were doing a thing called the 100 day challenge of doing art every day for 100 days. My uh, my challenge so far has been doing well, I've been doing art every day for more than 100 days already. So, <laughs> you know. But uh, doing a hundred day where they are, uh, look up hundred day challenge art. I think Kathy could tell you more about it. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate sharing. I appreciate um, your input and your ideas. So make sure to leave comments and let me know what you like, what you want to see. And as always, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And check out tomorrow, 1230 p.m. Pacific time, I will be doing how to make collections of reference material photographs on Unsplash because I need to go and collect some more references. And it's a good way to spend 45 minutes or an hour <laughs> or longer. It can be a rabbit hole. You can go down it. <laughs> take care, guys. Bye.